you know, when a couple says I do, so many people go into marriage thinking that they are going to be the only one forever. Right. Sadly, what would you do if you caught your spouse cheating? You trying to tell me something? No, I'm not. That is where we are getting into some tips today um, and try to help you get over some obstacles in your marriage when it comes to fidelity. Now, I have a post that I'm getting ready to read, and it's a good one. All right, let's you go. You got it? Okay, let's go. Overcoming infidelity. Here we go. The post starts off by saying, a few weeks ago, I found out my husband has had an affair. Hmm. He said it went on a month, and they did not sleep together, but they came very close. They still work together every day, but he said her job got dissolved, and she would be reassigned, and they would not work together. Hmm. I found out because my teenage daughter saw a text so now my kids also know hmm. it has been a very emotional few weeks he says he feels like we've been friends our entire marriage because we've barely had sex huh. and he's right sex has been very hard for me and i found myself not wanting it hardly at all okay this has hurt him greatly and I feel awful about it. There are times it has been better than others, but it's usually not that great. Okay. Sometimes he gets so upset or he can get mean. This has made me even more turned off by sex. For whatever reason, thinking I would lose him, I responded and we've had crazy sex for the past few weeks. Huh. It has been effortless and wanted by me. I do love him and want to make our marriage better. And he says he wants to stay. But the day I found out, he said he did not want to stop seeing her. I told him to leave. Oh, wow. Okay. He was going to go, but changed his mind suddenly and said he wanted to go to counseling. I agreed and we've had a ton of sex for weeks. He said he ended it even though they work together and he's sorry that he hurt me. The problem is he thinks he's in love with her. He told wow. me she made him feel loved and he still has strong feelings for her. I'm glad he's talking about it and being honest, but I don't know how to feel when he's basically saying he loves this person. I don't know how to work on our marriage with this going on. I don't know if he'll ever stop thinking about her and don't even know if it's worth it. I am sorry. I am so angry. I'm hurt and I don't know what to do. All right. So just kind of dealing with, with the topic for a moment. We are dealing with tips on overcoming the obstacles of infidelity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start here and then I'll, I'll check in with you. Gotcha. Trust is a big factor when you are dealing with a situation like this. So trust has been broken and trust and honesty literally needs to be prioritized in this scenario. Now follow where I'm going with this. And, and you know, this could be Frankie just being crazy in his mind and thinking something out of left field. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing to help get the relationship back on track is to start with the honesty I, I appreciate the sound of them going to counseling and, and taking those steps because that's a great process. But I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm getting the vibe that the response your husband is giving regarding this woman being sent to another department and she's not going to be around. It, it, something just ain't right. It just don't add up for me. Um, also, the aspect of the conversation where she's saying um, that he fell in love with her. It was more of an emotional affair. That's all. No sex. It was just, you know, we were just talking. No more than that. I'm not really feeling that vibe. Everything. So you're telling me that you had an emotional affair. No sex, no nothing. But that emotional affair was going to lead you to leaving your wife and divorcing your wife. And then all of a sudden something came up and you want to stay. Sounds to me like. Maybe when you went back to Bay at work and you said, baby, I, I, I told her, I finally told her I'm ready to be with you. I get the vibe that he got curbed and now he wants to stay and make his relationship work. So just coming back to my main point, I don't feel like he's given the whole truth mm -hmm. in this situation. I just 
think he's giving her partial truths or what she wants to hear, especially the whole part about I'm still in love with her and men, not all men. Uh, and so I don't want to put us in a box, mm-hmm. but for to fall in love like that, to fall in love, to leave your wife, your family and not have sex. That's that's really intriguing to me. But what's your thoughts? Well, my thing is. At least the wife is tr- at least you're trying now, at least you are trying to meet him in the middle halfway right. to what um, his needs are. Clearly, I guess he needed more sex and he's and he started to look for that outside of the marriage. And it seems like he had found someone to give him what he's looking for or else I don't think he'd be ready to leave so easily. Um, My advice to you would be to just take time to listen. And it sounds like you're doing that. So the more you listen, the more you begin to understand what it is your husband needs and what it is that you guys need to do to get on the road to repair your relationship. Also, um, he's, he's, he's had an affair. He's, he's, he's done the damage. It's also up to you to decide if you want to make your marriage work or not. I know you said in the post that it was difficult for you to decide on what to do. Um, my thing is if you're going to counseling, great, lean on that heavily, as heavily as you can lean on it. But at, but when this is all said and done, if you aren't at peace about your marriage and you don't think it can be repaired in any way, you have a very difficult decision to make. Mm -hmm. I would never tell anybody to get a divorce, whether this person has cheated or not. I would never, I would never do that because it's not my job. It's not my, um, It's just not in me to do that to anybody, but take a step back, communicate wholeheartedly, get things out in the open. What your husband really needs to do is confess as to what he's been with this other woman, get everything out on the table. So you'll know exactly what you're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, I just kept coming back. Like I said, I really feel like he's holding back to a certain degree on what's being said. Maybe he's not, but that's the vibe I'm getting from past experiences and past ish I've done in the past as well. So men can cover up things or or just give the partial truths because they feel in some fashion they're trying to protect you or protect themselves from being called out for their mess. But in the same process, I, I do like what you said in regards to the taking time to listen, make sure you're listening uninterrupted and that they are listening uninterrupted to you. Because a lot of times when we come into these conversations, communication is a two way street and we're so focused on putting our two cents out there that we're truly not hearing our partner and taking that time with my next tip to acknowledge your feelings during this process. Whatever the hurt is, whatever the heartache is, hey, it's out there. Acknowledge it so that you both are on the same page. And I do like the fact that they are going to some counseling i definitely recommend considering working with a licensed therapist or someone in that fashion but the one red flag or the one asterisk i want to put to that is be careful who you're disclosing that information to regarding what you're going through um so often i and don't get me wrong i I, i'm totally with like any type of pastoral counseling etc but you have to make sure that the person involved is impartial and they don't have an agenda maybe they're more on your husband's side or more on your side you need somebody who who can come in there who's skilled enough to know how couples work and get to the bottom of what you're going through without an agenda for you Mm -hmm. or your husband but for the couple as a whole what are you thinking there absolutely also um you're you're going back to the whole focus thing focusing on what the marriage is lacking focusing on not just what your husband needs but what you need as well Mm -hmm. it's already very clear as hell what he needs now we have to focus on what we need as a couple i know you're very sexual i'm not very sexual so how are we going to meet in the middle sex doesn't always have to be the center focus rather than maybe intimacy Maybe you're more of an intimate person who likes just intimate moments without the sex that needs to be communicated to your husband. Hey, look, I know how I know what you want. I know what you need. I'm willing to meet you. Let's meet halfway because a lot of times it, it, it's just not what she wants. So reading the post, it's just not what the woman wants all the time is sex. So 
Meet him halfway. Focus on the intimacy. Focus on the sexual aspect of your relationship. But always be be put yourself in a position to compromise and meet in the middle. It, it's about communication. It's two people in this. We don't need a third. Third ain't doing nothing but messing our marriage up. So come together and make it happen together. Yeah, and I, just kind of coming back to your prior point, um, I don't want to separate sex and intimacy because they they both play hand in hand. But the key component here is when the sex is slow or you guys aren't as active as you say you've been since finding out about the affair, you need to have something else to fall back on. So focus on those little things like, you know, small lunches, little dates, the, the, the things that got you together. And if the he was sexual intimacy, if he wasn't there to do those things when you first got together, letting him know that that's what you need. So many times I see it in, in wives that they give up so much of themselves for the sake of the husband, for the sake of the children, never putting on the table what's important to them. How about you just hug me? How about we just go for a walk together? Can we just talk? Things of that, th those little things. And you only know what works for you. Like I, I have a friend who if you buy her a gift, it's a waste of time. Her, her, her husband can't buy her a gift. But if he takes her hiking up in Yosemite, it's all good. So whatever works for you, what, those little intimate moments and definitely take time. Th this one's kind of a mess, especially with the children knowing to, oh, gu yeah. to guard the children there during this process. Whatever takes place. I know you're going to counseling, but there may be a certain portion of time where you may need to do some family counseling now that you're now that your daughter's in the mix she's found out about what daddy's going to because you don't want her to go with mama's going through and think that it's acceptable once she gets older in her marriage a lot of times when, when when men we do this in our marriage and we we step outside of our marriage we are totally thinking about ourselves and our sexual needs but what we aren't understanding is we are laying the foundation for our daughters to go ahead and make that same issue acceptable in their lives and we don't want that for them but we're doing it on our own so make sure that we're getting the daughter some form of help to make sure that that's not something that impacts her going forward as an adult right at the end of all of this it's all about family your structure your goals that you have together repairing getting on the road to recovery that's what it's about. Now, but now, but now, now, when we talk about repair, uh, he ain't gonna like this. But I don't feel like, like I said, I, I, I'm my antennas is up. Your antennas. And, and I just feel like <laughs> he's not giving us everything we need. But the biggest factor that's going to get you on the road to recovery, or one of the biggest factors, is he needs to eliminate the temptation to reengage. And if she's still there, that going to always be the elephant in the room mm -hmm. and if she's not there that's where you need to work through counseling because in the back of your mind maybe it's not her but who could it be the next time at work mm. and the next time how do you how would you suggest her you know some tips for dealing with that that being in the back of her mind it's it, gosh that's a hard one right because it will always be there it it comes back down to trust mm. how can I regain trust in him that's going to be a very big issue for her because my god you know it, it, it's all laid out it's all out on the table so we think so it sounds like but the biggest thing she has to deal with now is can i trust him to tell me the truth can i trust him to not go back and start talking to her when he said her job her position was resolved can i trust him to not be texting her or calling her on under what if we get into a fight what if we get into an argument can i trust you to do what you said you were going to do. Yeah. Working on rebuilding trust is a key factor in overcoming the obstacles of infidelity. Once again, it's not going to happen overnight. Don't feel like you've got to force something or go crazy in the bedroom and try to make something appear what it's not. Give yourself time, work the process, and hopefully you'll overcome those obstacles of infidelity.